After opening the Excel file example thinning with solution, you will see a screen that looks something like this. Your first step will now be to make sure that you have the solver add-in installed. It's a bit hidden and you find it under the data tab on the right side here. If your Excel solver add-in has not yet been installed and you cannot find it under the data tab, you have to install it manually. You do so by going to the according menu by clicking on file on the top left corner and then go to options and a little pop-up window will appear that will give you a couple of options and um, you will find add-ins on the bottom of the list of choices here. Then you click manage add-ins and you have a choice here, disable items, XML expansion packs, etc. But you want to go to Excel add-ins, click go, and you will find um, the solver add-in as a choice in the list that appears next. You tick the box to the left of the solver add-in and click on OK. And as you can see here, the solver add-in already appeared on the top under the data tab. After our Excel solver has successfully been installed, we can get started with the actual exercise and have a look at our um, Excel file that we're going to use to come up with a solution. The question that we're going to deal with today is how many hectares should be thinned from below and how many hectares should be thinned from above to maximize returns from our little example forest here. So let's have a look at the input coefficients in a first step. First of all, we do have two columns containing the two thinning types that we're discussing. The column C containing information about thinning from below and column D containing information about thinning from above. Now we have two points in time that we're going to look at. First of all, today, which would be indicated by T equals zero. And then a point in time in the future that would be um, indicated by t equals 20, as this point lies 20 years from now. So today we would have a harvest of 60 cubic meters per hectare from thinning from below, or 65 cubic meters per hectare if we carry out thinning from above. The timber prices that we can expect for the both thinning types are 45 Canadian dollars per cubic meter when carrying out thinning from below and 50 Canadian dollars per cubic meter when carrying out thinning from above. However, both activities are also related with costs and these costs are arising for processing and harvesting and are $20 per cubic meter in the case of thinning from below and $15 in the case of thinning from above. Now, the total costs for thinning in Canadian dollars per hectare um, are $1,200 in the case of thinning from below and it arises from multiplying the actual um, amount of timber available per hectare with the processing costs that would actually arise when we would harvest an entire hectare. So in this case, we multiply cell C5 with cell C7. And uh, we do the same for the total costs for thinning in the case of thinning from above. In this case, we multiply the processing costs from cell D7 with the actual harvest in cubic meters per hectare in cell D5. Of course, we also have to calculate the total revenues that we will get from both thinning types. We do this in um, line number nine. And in the case of thinning from below, we would uh, get a total of 1,500 Canadian dollars per hectare. And we calculate this by multiplying our harvest in cubic meters per hectare by the actual revenue, which is the timber price that we can expect to achieve, minus the actual processing costs of $20 that we have to pay. We do the same for the thinning from above 
and calculate a total of $2,275 per hectare. Now, in 20 years from now, of course, we can expect um, to have an increase in available stock. So on the stands that we did thin from below, we expect 410 cubic meters per hectare, whilst on the stands that we thinned from above, we expect 370 cubic meters per hectare. The timber prices are also higher for the larger timber that we are now able to sell and would come up to 60 Canadian dollars per cubic meter in the case of thinning from below and 63 Canadian dollars per cubic meter in the case of thinning from above. Once again, we also have costs for processing, in this case in line number 13, and the costs for processing arise in Canadian dollars per cubic meter once again, just like at the point in time T0 before. In the case of thinning from below, those costs are $15 um, per cubic meter, and in the case of thinning from above, it's about the same, $15 per cubic meter. Now we use the information available to calculate total revenues from final harvest that we can get from both um, management types. In the case of thinning from below, um, this is 18,450 Canadian dollars per hectare. We calculate this by multiplying the actual available timber per hectare with the timber price that we expect to achieve minus the cost for processing per cubic meter that we have to pay. We do the same for thinning from above and come to a total of 17,760 Canadian dollars per hectare that we calculate by multiplying the actual amount of timber available per hectare in cell D11 with the price that we achieve per cubic meter minus the costs that we have to pay for each cubic meter in um, harvesting costs. Now, we also have to anticipate specific losses related to the two management types. In the case of thinning from below, um, we have to uh, live with a 5% damage-induced reduction of our total revenues. This can, for example, be caused by a minor fire that goes through the forest or minor insect infestation or anything that you can actually think of that could damage our stand. Now, 5% damage-induced reduction of our total revenue of 18,450 Canadian dollars per hectare would sum up to losses of 923 Canadian dollars per hectare. And we calculate this by actually multiplying our total revenues with the damage-induced reduction in percent. Um, and we can do that by calculating or by multiplying 18,450 with 0.05 or 5% in Excel. The same applies for thinning from above, where we have a higher damage-induced reduction of 10% and multiplying our total revenue of 17,760 with 10% comes up to 1,776 Canadian dollars per hectare that we have to anticipate in damage reduction when carrying out this specific management type. Last but not least, a couple of cells have to be created that allow our Excel solver to come up with the optimum solution. In this example, I have done this for you already. First of all, in line 18, we create the cells that contain information on the actual aerial size that we assign to both management types. And then below that, we calculate the harvest volumes that arise in year 0 and in year 20. Let's have a look at one of those cells. So in year zero, um, we will be able to harvest 60 cubic meters per hectare when carrying out thinning from below. But as we do not know yet how many hectares we will actually be managing using that specific management type, we basically multiply 60 with zero. So the result that will be displayed in that specific cell will also be zero at the moment. The same applies to the other three cells. So we have a look at the cell containing information on the harvest volume in year 20 from thinning from above. And here we would multiply the actual amount that we harvest when we carry out our final harvest in year 20 in cubic meters per hectare 
with the area that we manage under this specific management type. And as in the example before, we do not know how many hectares we will assign to that management type yet. The result is at the moment zero. To proceed, let's have a look at our Excel solver add-in. We open the Excel solver add-in and find it under the data tab right here and see that it requires us to put in a couple of parameters. First of all, it asks us to set an objective. Well, our objective is to maximize total revenue and we have a cell here that contains information about total revenues potentially. Then it asks us what variable cells it is allowed to change to actually do find that optimum solution. And we said that the solver is supposed to give us information on how many hectares are actually supposed to be managed using thinning from below and how many hectares are actually supposed to be managed using thinning from above. So these two cells would be the area size assigned to each management type over here in column C and D. And last but not least, it asks us about the constraints that um, we want to apply, which would be our restrictions. And we do have three restrictions in this case. First of all, we have a maximum of 10 hectares available in total. We have a budget of 11,500 Canadian dollars to carry out uh, any operation in the forest. And our forest owner does accept a maximum of $13,000 um, in damage related to our activities. Let's have a look at the remaining cells that we have to fill with some information to allow our solver to come to an ideal solution. First of all, we have to calculate total revenues and we do this in cell G3. So as we are going to split our 10 hectares that are available in total between the two management types, we will also have to have an equation in that specific cell that would combine the revenues from both management types and um, yeah, deliver a total. So what we do here is we multiply the area size that we will be carrying out thinning from below with the revenues that we expect from the thinning in year zero when we carry out that specific management type per hectare. And then we add to it the returns that we will get from the specific management type with the amount of hectares that we will carry that specific management type out of. Additionally, we of course have to add the same for management type B. So we multiply the amount of uh, money that we get from thinnings when carrying out that specific management type, multiplied with the actual hectares that we do carry out that management type on. And then we have to add the returns that we get in year 20 also multiplied by the actual number of hectares that we carry that management type out on. As currently no hectares are assigned to either of the management types, as you can see here in line 18, of course we currently do get a total revenue of zero. So if you get a zero in this cell, this is perfectly fine because when we multiply everything with zero, of course our return will be zero in this stage. So the next step would be to have a look at our restrictions. We do have a maximum amounts available for area size, the budget, as well as the, as the acceptable damage. But we have to find a way to tell the solver how much of this um, budget or area or acceptable damage he's already used up when he's trying to find a solution. So regarding the area, it's pretty easy. We simply combine the area that we assign to thinning from below with the area that we assign to thinning from above, and that will be our total. So in the end, what the solver will do is that he will carry out all kinds of solution, but we will tell him that this number can actually never be higher than this number. So this will be our left side and this will be our right side of the restrictions equation. The same applies for the budget that we have available for the thinning activities. So in this case, we multiply the area that we're going to carry out thinning on 
with the cost that would arise to carry out thinning from, a, from below on one hectare. And then we add um, the area size that we assign to thinning from above, multiplied with the actual costs for carrying out the specific management type. And once again, we will have a zero written here because currently we did not assign any areas to either of the management types yet. But in the end, this number here will always have to be smaller or equal to our budget of 11,500. Now, the same applies for the maximum acceptable damage. We do know that if we carry out thinning from below, we have to anticipate losses of 923 Canadian dollars per hectare. So what we do here is we multiply the area that we actually do carry that management type out on with the anticipated loss. And then we add the same for the management type B, where we multiply the actual area that we will carry that specific management type out on with the loss that we have to anticipate per hectare, which is 1,776 Canadian dollars. Once again, our result is zero because currently no area is assigned to either management type. Now that we've compiled all the necessary information in our worksheet, let's go to the solver add-in and start finding an appropriate solution. We do so by clicking the solver icon on the top and the solver mask opens once again. First of all, we need to set an objective in the first line. We've said that our objective is to maximize total revenues from our activities in the forest. So our objective is actually in cell G3. And we can insert the information here by simply typing G3, or we can click on this little icon here and then find the according cell in our worksheet, click it, and it will be written into this mask. And we would push the enter or return button and come back to our mask. So the solver now knows that our objective can be found somewhere in the worksheet in cell G3. In the next line, we will have to tell the solver what it is actually supposed to do with G3. Remember that we entered our equation in G3 that multiplies the area size used for thinning from below with the revenues that we get from thinning as well as final harvest if carrying out that management type. And we've added the same for management type B. And we said that we want to maximize it. So now we have to actually click maximize here. It's also possible to, for example, find a minimum solution using this solver. The next step would be to assign variable cells to the solver. So the solver will actually try and find an optimum solution by playing around with all different values that a specific cell or set of cells can take on that we have to assign to it here. And we actually do not know how many hectares would ideally have to be managed using management type A or management type B. And this is what we actually want to know from the solver. So we tell the solver that, is, that it is allowed to change the area that we carry out management type A or B on, which would be cells C18 and cells D18. Now, our the solution is also subject to a couple of constraints or restrictions. So we have to add our three restrictions into this field here. We do so by clicking the Add Constraint button and then a little window looking something like this will appear. So we do have a reference cell, which would be our left side of um, yeah, the constraint equation. In the first case, this would be the area constraint. So the area that's actually used for a solution always has to be smaller or equal than the area actually available in our forest, which is 10 hectares. So our first constraint is area used has to be equal or smaller than area available. We push the add button 
because we want to add another constraint and do the same for our budget restriction. So the budget that we're going to use actually has to be smaller or equal than the budget that we actually have available, which is written in cell G8. Now we add our third restriction by pushing the add button once again and do this just in a similar fashion once again. The maximum acceptable damage has to be smaller or equal than the actual acceptable damage that we've been told to use by the forest owner. Now that we've insert all our restrictions, we push the OK button to come back to our overview. Now you can see we have all our three constraints written in a list in this window here. Last but not least, it is very important to tick this little box because a fourth constraint that we have not been talking about before is that the variables have to be non-negative. So it's actually not possible for the program to find a solution that would um, move any of the restrictions into the negative area. So for example, minus 10 hectares or minus $10,000 in the budget. Also, um, this is one of the yeah, general rules in linear programming in the methods that we use. Of course, the solving method that we want to use today is the simplex linear programming. Even though there are other choices available, today we stick to this. Now we've entered all the information that we have and we can finally click the solve button to see what results we get. After clicking the solve button in our solver add-in, we can now see the results that the solver came up with. The maximum revenue that we can possibly get from our two management types can now be found in cell G3 and it's around $199,000. And in cells C and D18, we can see how many hectares the solver actually assigned to each of the management types. So we can see that he assigned 5.6 hectares to thinning from below and 4.4 hectares to thinning from above, which also means that he used up a total of the 10 hectares available. And this is a good sign because, of course, we would like to carry out some management in all of our forests. And we can also um, confirm this here in our resources use section, where we actually define the left side of our restrictions equations. The area that the solver actually used to come up with this solution is 10 hectares. Regarding our budget, the solver actually did not have to use the entire budget available, which would have been $11,500. No, it only needed $11,004. So yeah, we saved a bit of money here, so to say. However, we actually had to accept the total damage um, that would be available, so to say, to come up with this maximum solution, which was $13,000.